And this year's Nobel Prize for Chemistry is about rewriting the code of life. Code of life? What's this? How do we rewrite it? This session answers all these questions, so stay tuned. The body of an organism comprises billions of cells, just like houses are made up of bricks. A cell is formed by combining various atoms and molecules, like wood and sentences are formed from alphabets. Popular as biomolecules, they are under constant wear and tear inside the cells. Of these biomolecules, deoxyribose nucleic acid, or shortly DNA, acts as the code of life. DNA is a double helical ladder-like molecule made up of three components, deoxyribose, phosphate, and nitrogen bases. The sugar phosphate is linked by an ester bond form the backbone, while the rungs of the ladder are made up of nitrogen bases. There are four different types of nitrogen bases, guanine, thymine, cytosine, and adenine. Watson and Crick suggested a complementary pairing of these nitrogen bases in their breakthrough discovery of DNA structure in 1954 based on Rosalind Franklin's X-ray diffraction pattern. This base pairing in different combinations spanning throughout the double helix make up the secret code of life or the genetic code. The code in DNA acts as an instruction manual followed by the cell's machinery in the form of proteins, meaning it commands from these secret codes and governs the functioning of cells. Hence, any change in these codes can affect cells and thereby organisms. But sometimes, the secret code changes due to several reasons, including exposure to hazardous radiations, chemicals or hereditary. These random changes are called mutations. It may result in the expression of abnormal genes or lack of a gene that impairs metabolic activities and even cause diseases like sickle cell anemia, cystic fibrosis, Huntington's disease, cancer, etc. What if we could edit these disadvantageous changes? Of course, this requires tools that can cut and rejoin at specific sites. Nature has caught some organisms with this ability. Many bacteria and certain archaea in nature can edit the genetic code of bacteriophages that attack and take control of the bacterial host mechanism. These bacteria and archaea have an adaptive immune system called CRISPR system clustered regularly in the spaced palindromic repeats. Let's see what the CRISPR system has. The CRISPR system is a cluster of genes in the bacterial genome. They code for crRNA, repeats, CAS proteins and other RNA components. The crRNA acts as a recognition site for CAS proteins. CAS proteins like scissors mediate the RNA-guided cleavage of invading DNA. Some types of CRISPR systems have non-coding RNA sequence called tracer RNA, trans-activating CRISPR RNA, which binds to the crRNA, repeats and promotes crRNA processing, CAS binding and CAS mediated cleavage. Now, Let's see how the CRISPR system defends against the attack of bacteriophages. CRISPR system works through three steps. Adaptation. The invading DNA fragments are acquired and incorporated in between the crRNAs. crRNA biogenesis. Pre-crRNA from crRNA repeats the including Pathogenic DNA fragments are processed and matured by CAS protein. Interference CRRNA binds to pathogenic DNA fragments complementary to it, and the CAS protein cleaves the pathogenic DNA fragment at a site called PAM, protospicer adjacent motif. Amazing, isn't it? Two scientists from two different continents 
Jennifer Doudna from America and Emmanuel Charpentier from Europe experienced the same amazement. They couldn't suppress their curiosity and became the pioneers of the revolutionary technology called CRISPR CAS9 and even led the two women scientists to win the 2020 Nobel Prize in Chemistry. Emmanuel Charpentier was working on Streptococcus pyogene, a microbe, and found the CRISPR system in them. To her amazement, she found the CRISPR locus contained only a single gene that was homologous to the CAS protein gene. In 2011, Emmanuel Charpentier met Jennifer Dotna at a conference and introduced her work on CRISPR. Jennifer Dotna was working on CRISPR's fundamental molecular mechanisms during those days, got interested in the CAS-like protein introduced by Emmanuel. They decided to collaborate and find out the function of the CAS protein. They found that CAS protein in S pyogene was capable of cleaving the DNA complementary to the mature CRRNA. This protein was named CAS9. Emmanuel found the tracer RNA was necessary for the maturation of CRRNA. This finding led to the thought of fusing CRRNA and tracer RNA and eventually produced single RNA to guide CAS9. In 2012, they published the, the discovery of CRISPR CAS9, a single RNA guided endonuclease and its possibilities in genome editing. The editing is made possible through a two-step cleavage and DNA repair. CRISPR CAS9 system achieves the first step and the cell itself repairs the DNA through non-homologous end joining NHEJ or homologous repairing HR. Inserting the desired gene with the homologous ends manipulates homologous repairing. This is how CRISPR CAS9 acts as a powerful tool for genome editing. The discovery of restriction endonucleases energized the field of biotechnology. Later on, there were various discovery of site-specific nucleases such as Singfincher nuclease CFN, transcription activator like effector nucleases talents. CRISPR CAS9 outstands them because it is an RNA guided nuclease. Thus, there is no requirement for protein engineering each time, unlike other nucleases. Along with the ease comes a huge responsibility to carefully consider both the unintended consequences and the intended impacts of a scientific breakthrough like human genome editing. CAS9 proteins, engineered as inactive nucleases, find a vast scope in understanding nuclear dynamics and its regulation. Transgenic organisms are easily produced using these techniques, creating room for human disease models for genetic disorders such as cancer. Researches on the development of CRISPR CAS9 as a therapeutic tool for cancer hepatitis, sickle cell anemia, muscular dystrophy, and even HIV help us get rid of these maladies. Yes, CRISPR-CAS9 is indeed a revolutionary discovery.